Welcome to another episode of Breaking the Silence. This time we have Camille James Harmon, who is going to tell you her story. But before we do that, please subscribe and like. Hit that little bell because that really helps us and you'll be informed of every single piece of material we put on this channel. The live streams, the films we run, this regular series, and our shorts. And even when we put in the community section updates about what we're doing. And once a month, on a Sunday, we have a live stream chat for patron members. So you might want to check that out as well. So Camille, thank you and break your silence. So this began for me in 1995, although I do suspect it started in childhood, but I didn't become aware of it until 1995. Uh, I was in my late 20s living in New Orleans and I was just about to move from New Orleans to Los Angeles. I was an actress and um, my boyfriend and I were both actors and we were gonna go to LA to do the big acting thing. <laughs> and I had purchased this Whitley Strieber book in New Orleans right before we left and it was Breakthrough. And I felt compelled to buy it. I was just walking through the store and saw it and went, oh my God, this guy is still writing about aliens? And I just knew a little bit about him because I had seen the movie Communion, but I hadn't read any of his books. And I thought, I wonder what he thinks now. That's very interesting. So I bought it and I read it at work um, right before we moved to LA. So that was my first information about aliens and UFOs was that book in 1995. So we got to LA and everything was going great. We had a great place to live. We had day jobs. I had my SAG card. I had my master's degree. I was like, I thought it was hot stuff and I was just going to take on the town. However, during the next few months, um, I started having all this weird anxiety and these weird physical symptoms that kind of seemed like pregnancy symptoms from what I understood, but I had never been pregnant that I knew of. Um, I was on the pill at the time, and but I had no menstrual cycle for th like three months, okay? So, you know, normally I would just run down to the Walgreens and get a test, but I didn't do that. I kept waiting and waiting for some reason. And finally in December of 1995, you know, right after we moved in September, so in December, um, we were walking our dog in our neighborhood in Silver Lake in the daytime. And she was barking at these squirrels that had run up in a palm tree. And we looked up and there was this black UFO over the neighborhood, like really, really high and very hard to make out actually. But it was black and it, I wanna say it was a triangle. I'm not quite sure, cause that's how high up it was, but it was stationary and it had a shimmer around it, like a plasma field. And I remember, uh, you know, being very excited and looking at it with Eric and he was teasing me and saying, you in a UFO book, look, it's a UFO. And I said, what if it is? And I looked down at him and then we looked back and it was gone. And I was like, oh my God, it was a UFO. So I ran home, I left him with the leash and the dog and I ran home and I reported it. And it, MUFON had a, a, a hotline in the phone book back then. And so they said, oh, by the way, you know, we have these meetings every month if you want to come. So I. I started going to MUFON meetings. And, but before that even, still in December, what happened next was I had this sleep paralysis attack in the night, twice in one night. And I had never had that before. I mean, I had had that before, but I'm, I had had that very occasionally in my life, but I had never had what happened that particular night associated with it. So what happened was, I heard a voice say my name in my ear. It was like a, it was like an AI voice. It was like a computer talking to me. And it just said Camille in my ear while I was in this paralyzed state. And then I had a flash of a gun pointed at my face. And I was just, you know, and it woke me up and I came out of the paralysis. And I was like, what the hell? Because that was a bit much, you know, I had, I had never heard anything or seen anything in association with that state previously. And then it happened again later that night. So um, eventually at MUFON, after hearing Kim Carlsberg speak and being introduced to Barbara Lamb, I had this like very deep knowing 
I was like, oh my God, I think I'm one of these people. I just know I am. Like I just, I knew it. And I was looking at Kim Carlsberg's book, which had like a checklist in the back, um, her, her book, Beyond My Wildest Dreams. And I had like 85% of the things on the list. And, and you know, I was kind of shaking at the, <laughs> kind of having a panic attack. And I was introduced to Barbara. I set up an appointment with her and I did a regression to that night in December when I had that sleep paralysis attack. And I got this full on memory of the, the lights in my room. The, it was like a turquoise blue light that descended and it seemed to have like a very solid feel like, um, not like a normal light, not like a spotlight or something. And it, and when it hit me, I was paralyzed. I was curled into a ball, like a fetal position, and I was taken through the ceiling. And I'm screaming and freaking out. And the next thing I know, I'm flat on a table in this white misty room. And I can't even like, contain myself. I'm just screaming with horror and Barbara's talking me through it. And I said, everybody's looking at me. Everybody's looking at me. And she said, who's looking at you? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, you know, look around. <laughs> she had to force me to go through it. And I looked over here and there was this row of beings that, that were white, kind of misty, what you would call a gray, I guess. They had the big heads and the black eyes, you know, and they had white robes on with a high collar and they had these long skinny arms. And to me they were tall, but I'm short, I'm only 5'1", so maybe, I don't know, maybe they were my size, but they were very thin and made them seem taller maybe. I don't know how tall they were. But they had long arms and they were staring at me and they were saying, it's okay, it's okay, relax, relax, relax. And then my knees went open by themselves and nothing was touching them and I started freaking out again. And then this, she said, you can go up above and remember this from above if you want. So I did that. And then this being that I could not see, I was like blocked from seeing that being, came between my legs and I saw a flash of an instrument, like a, like a scary looking speculum, kind of like, a, like an egg whisk, you know, or an egg beater kind of thing. And this being put that in me and then cranked it open or what, oh, it was just terrifying. And took, this, took it out and there was this little pink thing in it little tiny baby of some kind. I couldn't see it really well because of the slats and the thing. And then walked out of the room with it. And I was like, oh my God, they didn't even let me see it. And I'm crying and I'm crying and I'm just, I mean, you know, I, I came home with that tape to my poor boyfriend. It was a little cassette tape and I made him hear it. And, and he was like, oh my God, you know, like my girlfriend's either crazy or this is real and it's really bad either way. And you know, that feeling you get from someone you love when you tell them what you think is real. And I, you know, I called my mom, you know, everybody. I had to tell everybody. And so that was the first thing. And then a few months later, he went out of town and I was sleeping alone. And I woke up three nights in a row. It was in July of 1996. I woke up three mornings in a row at 4 a.m. sharp. 4 a.m., 4 zero zero on my digital clock going, what is going on? I don't hear a noise. Why am I up at exactly the same time, three times in a row? And so I did a, re oh, and I, and I got in the tub to shave to go see my friend at the beach. And I had this bleeding, like freshly crusted pinprick triangle on my calf. And I got so mad and I was like, I know that's some alien thing. I've seen that in a book or a show. And so I, I went and got regressed this time with Yvonne Smith, because I knew she was the other lady in town doing regressions for abductees. So I had a memory that with her of going in the beam of light out my window instead of the ceiling and being then being on the table. Right. But this time there were three little guys that had wrinkly heads. They seemed to be like, I only saw the tops of their heads. They had the wrinkly heads that were either brown or gray. And I was mad and screaming and cussing at them. And I said, you make me afraid of little kids because you look like little kids, but you're not little kids. 
and one of them put its hand on my forehead and started stroking my forehead and I said, get your freaking hand off me, little bastard or whatever. But when he did that, it calmed me. It just sedated me. And I said, do whatever you have to do and let me go home. And then there was a tall one, a white gray again, like a white, big white head, big almond eyes, the, the white robes with the high collar. And he was like the doctor. And he, I remember fixating on his, his hands because he had these beautiful long fingers. And, and he had this thing he took out of the ceiling and he put this tip on it and then he just popped it in my leg. And that's, that's apparently what that triangle came from. That's all I know about that. So that was the next thing. Later on, I met some people at a, at a meeting and we were talking about that whole four o'clock thing. And because they were talking about the 3 a.m. thing, right? And I said, well, mine was at 4 a.m. And they said, what, what time of year was it? I said, summer. It was like July. And they said, oh, they don't do daylight savings. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. But it's right. Like, if, if, you, if you kept it in normal time, it would have been 3 a.m. You know? Interesting. The devil's hour in Catholicism. <laughs> um, so... Then the next thing I had was um, my dentist found this object in my tooth and it was a tooth he had just worked on previously when he had changed out all my fillings. So I had told him, I said, by the way, I'm an alien abductee and I've read that people freak out in the dentist chair occasionally because they have flashbacks. And I said, that's never happened to me, but I'm just telling you. And I said, if you ever find anything weird in my body, you have to tell me. So sure enough, he does all my fillings and they're all great, except this one filling is hurting me and I go back in. And he digs it out and he finds this charcoal gray spherical thing in my tooth. And he's like, he was freaked out. He said, what do you want me to do? And he showed it to me and he was scratching on it and it had the mirror. And I said, I don't know, just, you know, fill it up. And I said, can you get me a piece of it? And he said, no, it's so hard. I can just, you know, turn it into dust and it's going down the drain. And I was like, okay. So anyway, um, I did a regression to that. And I thought I was going to get aliens. I had gone back to Barbara for this one. And instead of aliens, I had this my lab, you know, military abduction memory. And I have no idea how I got there in the memory, but I came to in the memory on a table. But this time it was like a regular human exam room with cabinets and shelf, you know. And um, there were two guys in lab coats and they had khaki pants brown pants and and black shiny shoes and all I got from them I felt really drugged like with the aliens I felt super alert I just couldn't move but when I was with these guys I felt hazy and they called me a troublemaker and they squirted something into my jaw like with a syringe not up through the mouth like a dentist would but like they they put something in a syringe through into my cheek into my tooth and then they put me on a, a gurney and rolled me down a hall. And we went into this hangar and there was a, a black helicopter and the ceiling was retractable. So they put me in this, this black helicopter. The ceiling opens up, it's daylight. It's like super bright. And I remember we went up, up, up. And then they flew me home to my Silver Lake neighborhood to this field and landed and, and said, go home and take a nap. And then I came out of the memory. So when I came out of that, I was like, what the hell? I was so mad. And Barbara said that was her first my lab memory. And the, the anger and the fear was so different qualitatively because it was, it was, it still makes me really paranoid and really angry, but it was more betrayal because it's like your own kind. And then you, your mind starts going, oh my God, like if that's real and that happened, then what the hell else? has happened that I don't remember and you get really paranoid thinking about that you know so the only good experience I've had through this beside all the wonderful friends and synchronicities and you know I have had good experiences I um I found myself saying things like humans this humans that oh and I was thinking why am I talking like that like I'm not a human or I'm not aligning with humans and I went to Barbara and I said, can we target this feeling of, of like me longing for some beings that I don't remember who they are? Like, it's kind of abstract, but can we do that? And she said, yeah. So the first part of that memory was I had this claustrophobic feeling of being 
compressed into this body, like, like taking a sofa and stuffing it into a pillowcase and just feeling claustrophobic and screaming, I don't want to be in this body. It's so weak and crying. And, and she said, well, go to when you felt strong. And I popped out and I was in space and I was like, in space as a blue light. I was a blue orb of light. And I recognized my two friends that were blue light. And I'm crying with this recognition of my friends. And I'm looking at Earth and Earth spinning. And I'm, it's like terrifying to me. And I had this feeling of like being on a diving board, like a high diving board, not wanting to go. And I said, I don't want to go to Earth. I don't want to go to Earth. And she said, well, why do you have to go to Earth? And I said, I don't know. And she said, well, see if there's someone you can ask. So. I asked that and then these white light beings appear just bigger than us, you know, and pure, I was overwhelmed with them. They were just pure love and energy and knowledge and, and I'm, re I'm recognizing them and I'm like, they're my home, they're my family. That's why I wear white robe and, and I'm just crying and I'm melding and I'm having all this like love and ecstasy and and they said I said why do I have to go to earth and they said to fight evil and I was like oh my god okay seriously like how am I supposed to do that <laughs> what are you talking about and they said um, tell people we exist and that we love them and they gave me this beautiful image it was like a video game it was like they had this love coming from the central source through them and then it came out of their arms and it was it was pointed at the earth at us but we were all walking around with umbrellas you know it's like this image you're like we're always shooting this love down to you and you're all walking around with umbrellas it's like we're trying to get you and and it was so beautiful and i said well what am i supposed to do like lecture about you and they said no you're still supposed to be an actress and i was like oh god really because you know most of the stuff they make is crap really <laughs> and, and, they said, don't worry, we will set it up so that you meet people and make projects worthy of your time. And I was like, well, okay, that sounds great to me. Let's do it. So that was, that was an incredible experience. I mean, I still think about that all the time. And it eclipsed all the bad stuff. And um, so, you know, that's, it became an obsession, obviously, when something like this happens to you. I, I wrote for UFO Magazine for five years. I went to Roswell. I went to England and walked in the crop circles. I was just all in, all in. I moved, we ended up moving to Arizona um, in, when was it, 2005. And we lived there 10 years. And I was hanging out with the Arizona MUFON people and I had sightings. I had other sightings in Arizona. In Arizona, I saw... Um, a row of lights in the mountains in Tucson that blinked out one at a time. Uh, I also saw, I also was really good at photographing UFOs, like, but not seeing them at the time the photo was taken. They would show up in the photos. So that has happened. Um, I've seen other ones in Red Rocks, California on a camping trip with UFO people. And, um, you know, the obsession continued. And then I started writing a book and I got to the end and I was like, I still don't know what this is. Like, I don't know what this is. Is it mind control? Is it, is it aliens? Is it, I don't know what it is. I don't want to lead anyone astray. And I made this prayer and I was like, okay, God, I'm so over it. Just like reveal to me what this is so I can finish my book and move on with my life. And then I had this whole like born again thing happen to me. And I started reading books about aliens or demons. And I was like paying attention to that theory. Like, oh my God, maybe it's that simple. Like, wow. And I went back to church. Um, my husband, Jeff, who's an astrologer for a living, and I help him with that business. He was kind of like, <laughs> and he predicted it. He said, you're going to have a big spiritual awakening. And I'm like, yeah, I have those all the time. And he said, no, something big. So when I went back to the church, he was like, oh, this is going to be interesting, you know. So I started going to the Latin mass and reading about saints and mystics. And I just loved it because there was so much crossover with the mystics and this phenomenon to me. I just, I just dug reading about them. And um, anyway, so uh, I have pulled back out of that a little bit. I don't think it's all demons anymore, but I think it might be some somewhat part of the fact, you know, what's going on. I have a hard time making up my mind about what it is still. 
I have many, many theories going through my head. Time travelers, angels, demons, other dimensionals, crypto humanoids, I don't know. Mind control, I don't know still. But I just am back in the conversation, hoping that my story can be useful, you know, to everybody else, trying to figure it out. And I do wonder, you know, my genetics, like is it because I'm Irish? I have A negative blood type. Um, is it because I have family in NASA? My uncle and my cousin in NASA, you know, with very high up positions. So um, could I have been put in a program when I lived with my uncle in Huntsville, Alabama, when I was two for a year? I don't know. Um, these are the things that go through my mind. I just don't know why me and I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself other than I just keep acting and I I'm able to balance many different ideas that that conflict with each other. <laughs> I don't know why, but I'm, I'm just happy to be, I'm happy to be confused until I can make up my mind. So I, I keep changing my mind about what this is. I'm, you know, struggling with deciding what it is. I lean towards, the angelic or demonic combination, right? Um, but I also, I'm not saying they're not physical beings by saying that. I think that's just my upbringing. And I haven't had anything happen to me. You know, I had a lot of people pray over me and it stopped. And so I had this long period of time where nothing happened. And I decided to come back into the into the fray in 2022 because I just got curious again and things were happening in the news and it, it seemed to be going more mainstream and I just got hooked again and I went to a conference and um, in Arizona and had a good time and I thought wow I just can't stay away I got to get back into the subject so I was playing catch up because a lot had happened since I had dropped out in 2013 and I was I was trying to like figure out who was who, you know, with the new latest information with the, with the government and all that. And, um, and I, I met Chris Bledsoe and I really connected with him. Like we met in person and really connected and I got to spend some time with him. And he, he felt for me with this, you know, this being a Christian and having this happen and then having, having to like make sense of it in that context. And he said, Camille, it's okay. Like he thinks they're angels, right? And I was like, oh, that would be great if, you know, because my good beings, yeah, I want more of that, but I don't want more of the on the table stuff. And so he said, you know, just go outside and pray and say, God, I'm ready to work with your angels again, you know? And so I did that and I stood outside last year and I prayed and I said, you know, God, I'm, real, I'm willing to work with your angels again, but I'm still kind of nervous, so I, I'm happy to see UFOs and I'm happy to have dreams, but if you just like manifest one and I'm wide awake, I think I might have a heart attack, so please don't do that. And, um, and then that night, I had um, a dream. I, it was weird because I had gone in the guest room, I had a dream where I woke up and something was touching my neck, like a doctor like probing my neck. And I was like, oh my God, are you here? And I'm looking at the wall and I was too afraid to turn around. and. And finally, I, I said, are you here to heal me? Because that would be great. And could you go down the hall and heal Jeff? And, and then I got brave enough to look behind me. And there were these two guys, like human looking faces. And they were very, they had no emotion and they were just looking at me. And then I woke up. So I don't know what those guys were, but that's the first thing I've had happen in this really long time span. And it didn't, they didn't frighten me as much, you know, as an alien face. So I don't know what that was, but... I'm hoping that I have been working with these good beings, the ones that I feel are my family, you know, the ones that I came from, whatever those were. And it was interesting when they said, we'll set up your career and all that, because the very next movie I did after that experience, that hypnosis experience, was a movie called The Encounter about an angelic encounter. And I was like, that's pretty cool, guys. That, you, you know, that was my very next film. So, um, you know, and I've done other things in my career that I feel are moving the needle for good. I mean, not everything, but you know, 
exposure of evil. Like, that's kind of my thing. This I have a project coming up about fighting child trafficking, which is like, yes, please let that happen. So, you know, I'm trying to be integrating my my career with my mission. I do feel that I have a mission, right, to expose evil, to talk about things, to wake people up. And I feel a lot of us have that feeling. We have this mission, like I'm on a mission. I may not know what it is exactly until I know, like whenever it's time, I'll know more. I have that feeling. Um, so I do have that urgency. I have had the, the earth changes dreams, the volcanoes, the tornadoes, all those kinds of dreams. I do have these fears of, you know, that I'm, I'm gonna live through something. Like they didn't waste their time with my generation of people training us and preparing us for something. Don't you think, don't you think it's imminent? Because if not, they would have just waited and started on younger people. You know, I'm 57. So I think they wanted a lot of people my age range in our prime in positions of leadership for whenever this goes down, we would be this age. So I think it's imminent. I think it's imminent. And I, I'm excited. I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'd like to comment on what Camille had to say about the military abduction or the human, her own kind abduction. It's happened to me. I was taken as well, more than once. And I was in the company of human beings and they did work on me and they put me back and it left me feeling very, very drugged. I know many of you have had this happen and the more of you that can come forward and talk about this, the better. If you wanna be on our show, please email us. There's a link below and it's also will be in the description. Email us, we'd love to have you on. We'd love to have you break your silence and tell us your story. We'll see you next time on another episode of Breaking the Silence.